Hey everyone, I'm Asia Dang, and thank you so much for joining me on my channel. All I have to say is happy birthday to me. My birthday is going to be this weekend, and I am turning 36. Now, while I do not wish to go back to my 20s because honestly, not the best decade. And yes, while we did have fun, a ton of fun in our 20s, the whole decade was a mess. But sometimes I do wonder how different my life would be if I knew what I knew now back then about money. So in honor of my 36th birthday, here are 10 money things I wish I knew in my 20s. If you would love to see more of these type of videos, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. The first thing I would do is stop buying those ugly, sparkly Steve Madden shoes, if you know, you know, and I would have put money aside to pay towards my student loans. Let's just say, you know, when you're off in college and you don't have your parents looking over your shoulder, watching your every move, it's easy to uh, get out of control with the spending. I mean, I was kind of like that in my 30s as well, but it was even worse in my 20s. And while yes, I still would have had fun, though it was pretty easy to have fun in San Francisco in 2005 to 2010, on a dime, I still would have put aside a couple hundred dollars here and there into a high yield savings account in order to throw one huge lump sum of money towards my student loans post-graduation. I mean, I think my generation set the footwork to show all y'all how dangerous student loan debt can be. And if you notice, I didn't say I wouldn't take out student loans because I think that is a very privileged stance. There is no way I would have been able to go to college without student loans, but I would have been more aware of how to prepare for my finances post-graduation in order to tackle my student loans without being a 30-year-old with student loan debt. Let's see, if I were to have just put aside $200 every month, times 12 for four years, that would have been almost $10,000. That's of course without any interest that would have accumulated in a high yield savings account, but that would have been $10,000 that would have gone straight to the principal post-graduation. And honestly, that would have made a huge difference because if you remember my story, I ignored my, grad, my undergrad student loans for so long that I accumulated $50,000 in interest. But the moral of this story is to save up money where you can in order to throw as much money as you can to your student loans after graduation. Now, number two is I would have worked during school. <laughs> I only worked one year out of the four years I was in undergrad. And honestly, I had the time to work. I felt that you know, why would I work? I'm working hard at school already. I have the rest of my life to work. No. <laughs> it might have made my life a little bit more difficult and crazy during school, but now in my 30s, I think doing that would have set me up to be more financially in a better place. Okay, number three is credit cards aren't free money. I got my first credit card at 18. I think for my college years, I actually didn't use the credit card because I, I was actually very, very scared of it. I was very scared of using my credit card. But when I moved to LA and had to set up my own apartment, had to furnish it for the very first time, me living on my own for the very first time, that is when I used the credit card and that is when I got in trouble. Because not only would I max out my credit card, I would also only pay the minimums. And if you know anything about credit cards, you never, ever, ever wanna pay minimums on any debt really, but especially on credit cards because that is just gonna keep you in the cycle of being in debt. You will never, ever, ever get out of debt if you only pay minimums on any kind of debt, period. Just strive to be conscious. I think we all know now, or we should know now how to work a credit card. If you want me to do a video about a credit card, let me know. Number four, similar to the credit card fiasco, is not to close your credit card after you pay it off. My credit card was the first debt I paid when I started my debt-free journey. I think at that point I had about $1,200 on my card and I was able to pay it off in a day. I paid it off literally that day once I decided, Asia, it's time to change your life. After I paid it off, I closed it. Now you would think that closing it is a good idea, just like 
If I'm not gonna use it anymore, why do I have it? Let's just shut down that account, let's be free of it. You think that's a good idea, but what happens when you close a credit card is you erase all of your credit card history. When my payment history is shit, when my credit card usage is shit, when I probably had derogatory remarks because I had creditors calling me all the time, and then I took away my oldest standing account, which if we remember was like 12 years, credit score down the drain. It took me years, years to build back um, my credit score because of those mistakes. So even though I had a credit card since 2005 because I closed it on my credit score, it says that I've only had a card uh, for the past three years. While it doesn't truly affect my credit score because really the only issue now is my credit age, because three years is still considered, you know, young, um, but everything else is good to go. But yeah, man, I would definitely have like a perfect credit score if I kept that credit card open. So the more you know. Number five, I think this is obvious, is I would learn how to budget. I think everything that I've talked about up to this point could have been resolved if I had had a budget. I mean, obviously the main reason I didn't build a budget is because most of my college years I wasn't working, but you still need to build a budget to be able to fully understand where your student loans are going, right? What are you spending your student loans on? And then once you graduate, what are you spending your hard earned money on? I don't even know where I spent my money in my 20s because I have literally nothing to show for it. I don't have anything that I bought in my 20s. So what does that mean? That means I wasn't paying off debt, I wasn't investing, I wasn't doing any of the financial basics that we all should be doing after high school, you know, when we're starting our life on our own. I wasn't doing any of those. And I was broke for most of my 20s, actually. I was overdrafting all the time, I was struggling to make any money. There were times that I actually had to go to my landlord. Thankfully, she was very understanding and I had to say, listen, I can't pay on the first, can you give me like two more weeks? And even when I started making money, when I was like starting to host, starting to model, starting the YouTube channel, finally making money, I still was broke because I didn't have those financial basics that told me where your money should go. Knowing where your money goes is like the bare minimum of financial health that we all need to go through. And I think it would have been an easier learning curve for me to have done that when I had less money because I could have built those, you know, uh, like building blocks of financial health then, than starting off when I did now, when I had more money actually and had just more response and had more responsibilities. But you know, that's why I built Master Plan. That's why we have a budget planner. That's why we're building an Excel spreadsheet for Master Plan. And I have my how-to budget videos as well. Number six, similar to learn how to budget is to start building an emergency fund. Remember, an emergency fund is three to six months of expenses. I think now post COVID people are saving up a year of expenses for me. Do whatever makes you feel comfortable. That emergency fund is important. Learning how to budget and building an emergency fund in your 20s, I think are incredibly important. Number seven is I would have skipped the new car. When I first moved to LA, I was able to use my mom's old car. I think it was like a 1995 black Ford Explorer. It was working. They don't make cars like that anymore. And then I think it was probably after graduation, I decided I just needed a new car. I just needed a new car. So I decided on a Fiat because I thought they were cute. My mom had to co-sign it because Obviously my credit was shit and I wasn't making that much money, but I honestly had no business buying a new car. Fortunately, I really did love my Fiat. I had it for nine years, I paid it off. It was the second debt I paid off. It's been paid off for a while. I did sell it uh, a couple months ago just because I felt like she was dying, chun -Li was dying, and I wanted to at least get some money from her. Um, and it's now in a high yield savings account to save for a car down the road eventually. But yeah, I had no business buying a new car that just added to the expenses that I couldn't already afford as it is. I mean, there's the argument of you never wanna buy a new car. I think I am definitely along that argument where um, just buying a newly used car is great, but honestly, do what you do, it's your money. But I would not have bought a new car. I definitely would have not bought any type of car 
in my 20s when I couldn't even afford like rent, but you know. Number eight is to buy timeless. As I mentioned before, I have nothing to show for what I spent in my 20s because it was all shit. While it's like very scary to spend more money on quality things, and I'm not just talking about like furniture, I'm talking about clothes, I'm talking about like equipment. I would recommend saving up for something more expensive that you can use for decades to come. Save up for timeless things. Save up for things that'll last you in your 20s so you don't have to buy your fourth couch in your 30s. <laughs> you know, and then also just logistically, proven high quality products will actually end up saving you more money in the end because you don't have to keep on buying them. But also remember high price doesn't mean high quality. So do your research, don't make snap decisions and be able to buy products uh, that'll last you years. Number nine is, I wish I knew that you didn't have to be rich to invest. Even now I feel like there's this stigma about investing because it is, it is kind of scary. Um, you don't necessarily wanna see your money basically disappear for the next 10, 20, 30 years because that is basically what investing is. You're putting money aside and you're not gonna see that for decades. And in your 20s, when you already don't have enough money, it's not something that is desirable for you. And you're not thinking that far in advance. You're not thinking about retirement because that's in, what, 60 years? But, you know, just being able to put aside $100 into a Roth would have made such a difference to current Asia now. And by the way, opening up a Roth is incredibly easy to do. All you have to do is literally log on to Fidelity, Vanguard, Ally, and open one up. And then after that, you just automate it so you don't even have to think about it. Start at 100 every month and then you increase that number when part-time jobs turn into full-time jobs. Again, I don't regret not investing earlier um, because for me just, you know, life happens the way it's supposed to happen. But if I had invested earlier in my 20s, retirement life now would have looked completely different if I had a portfolio, portfolio that was building for over 10 years before I actually started properly investing and properly paying off my debt and all that stuff. And number 10, we've made it. The 10th money thing that I would have done in my 20s is I actually would have taken a gap year and I would have used that time to either work or travel because I think both of those can give you really great life experience um, that you need in order to really utilize college efficiently. And granted at 36, I still don't fully know what I want to do and my passions are always changing, but that's of course life. But you know, at 18, I went into marketing because I thought Samantha Jones from Sex in the City, I thought her life was just so glamorous and I wanted that. So that's why I signed up for marketing. And by the way, Samantha Jones wasn't even in marketing. She was in public relations, which are two different things. And yes, going to college, by yourself, especially if you're not living at home, especially if in your, you're in a new city, that is a very grown-up adult thing. Like that's the beginning of baby Asia starting her life. But that's not real world experience. You're still in school, you're still in this little bubble, and um, I don't know, I think it's hard to learn about yourself while you're stuck taking 40 credits. I think if I had traveled by myself or if I had at least worked a little bit, I would have come to realize things that I liked and didn't like. And therefore I would have been able to um, take the classes that actually really interested me. Or for me, I would have been able to maybe focus more on journalism in undergrad versus having to spend $100,000 going to grad school for journalism. But if I had somehow traveled and discovered that, that would have saved me time and money. So those are the 10 money things I wish I knew in my 20s. If you would like to add to this list, please do in the comments. We are so interested in this stuff. And if you know anyone who's in their 20s and is like, oh yeah, this is my life, I'm so cool, send them this video. Actually, no, send them my debt video about me crying about $200,000 of debt and then send them this video. You can say, you could be this girl or you could be this girl. You decide. I'm Aisha Dang, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you all later, bye.